Ah, one, two, three, four. All right, it's grappling with the text for Holy Week. We are going to talk about Holy Week and the events of Holy Week today, uh, and kind of um, and go through them in a summary fashion so we can know uh, what was going on in the life of Jesus during this last and most important uh, week of his life. Now, I'm going to try to draw a timeline here of, of Holy Week uh, and uh, see if we can figure this out. Remember, the Jewish day begins at sundown. So you have darkness. If we can do like, like this, this is night and day, uh, and that would be one day. So we can start on uh, Saturday. Uh, then we have Palm Sunday, night and day. We have uh, we have Holy Monday, Holy Tuesday, Holy Wednesday. And we're going to need a little more space for Holy Thursday, Holy Friday, Holy Saturday, and Holy Sunday. So we'll see how uh, how that works and see if we can track these events. Now, the whole of Holy Week is really occurring in and around Jerusalem, uh, and especially. Uh, the city close to Jerusalem, Bethany, and Jesus is going back and forth uh, between the two cities, uh, Bethany and um, and Jerusalem. Now, Bethany is on the other side of the Mount of Olives, uh, and so we'll draw a picture of that and see if we can kind of get um, get all of our uh, get ourselves oriented as well. If you just kind of imagine a map, you have uh, Mount Zion would be here. Let's draw the temple. Kind of here on top of Mount Zion, the city of David kind of comes down this way. So here's the, the temple and the surrounding gates. The city of David kind of comes up and around there, and you have the Pool Bethesda. You have the um, the Kidron Valley down here. The Mount of Olives is here, and um, uh, uh, Bethany is over here. Bethsaida maybe is right here uh, on the other side of uh, of the Mount of Olives. And if you were looking at this, just kind of imagine looking at this from the south as a cutaway. You have Mount Zion, which is here. Then you have the Kidron Valley. Then you have the Mount of Olives coming up here. And Bethany would be over here. The temple would be down here. Uh, the Garden of Gethsemane is going to be up here uh, and so forth. Now, it seems like Jesus goes to Bethany on Saturday uh, night, and it's here where his feet, where Jesus is anointed um and by Mary uh in in preparation uh for his burial and then Sunday is Palm Sunday because it's on this day that Jesus goes into Jerusalem so he travels from Bethany up to the top of the Mount of Olives he prepares a donkey there and he travels down the Palm Sunday road ironic that Jesus enters Jerusalem on the Palm Sunday road isn't it or maybe the road got his name after that. I'm not exactly sure. But the palms are there. The cloaks are there. Jesus travels down the road, probably up through the um, by the Pool of Siloam, and he enters in here. Here's Herod's palace and so forth. And he enters into to Jerusalem. He goes up to the temple, and he looks around on Sunday night. But then he returns uh, that night, and he goes back to Bethany. So Jesus spends that night... Uh, in Bethany. Then on uh, Holy Monday morning, Jesus travels back to Jerusalem. Uh, there's a couple of things that happen. In fact, it's on it's Jesus' uh, way into Jerusalem on Holy Tuesday that he curses the fig tree. Uh, and we know th this cursing of the fig tree is really what helps us date all of these events. And it's on Holy Monday that Jesus goes and he cleanses the temple. And then he returns that night to Bethany. So back into Bethany for Tuesday night. Then on Holy Tuesday, this is the big, this is the big one, when uh, a ton of things are happening. And I've got a little list, and we'll put the link to the list of the Holy Week events uh, on this, um, on the links on this video, and you can see. But Tuesday is when Jesus travels from Bethany to Jerusalem, and he's in the temple, and this is where he has his last public teaching. Now, this last public teaching of Jesus is going to be um, with the Pharisees and with the scribes and with all of these his opponents there, and they're going to come to him with three questions. They ask him the question about uh, 
uh, about uh, taxes. Who should we pay the tax to? And that's when he says, show me the coin. They ask him the question about marriage and the resurrection. That's the Sadducees. And remember, they didn't believe in the resurrection. Jesus says, you're neither given in marriage, etc. Uh, you neither know the scriptures and the power thereof. That's that. And then they ask him about the greatest commandment of the law. And that's when Jesus says, love the Lord with all your heart, soul, mind, and strength. And uh, love your second is like it, love your neighbors yourself. And then Jesus says, well, if you want to play this game, well, then I've got a question for you. Why does uh, does David say, the Lord said to my Lord, sit here at my uh, in my right hand until I make your enemies your footstool. How can the Messiah be David's son and David's Lord at the same time? Now, they can't answer this question because they don't understand the two natures, that Jesus is the son of David by his human nature. This is so, so wonderful. And he's the Lord of David according to his divine nature. Anyway, they can't say anything. He's, he quiets them, and then he leaves. Now, it's on this Holy Tuesday that Jesus is leaving the temple. He sees the widow's might. He heads, uh, he, they're walking past the temple down into the Kidron Valley here, and the disciples are looking at the stones that make up the base of the temple. And they say, look at how huge these stones are. And Jesus says, I tell you, not one of these stones will be left on top of the other. And and it's when they finish walking up to the top of the Mount of Olives, and maybe they're taking a break, break up here, that they say, uh, when will these things be? And what will be the sign of the coming of the end of the age? And that's why uh, when Jesus is teaching to them about the end times, this is on Holy Tuesday, Matthew 24 and 25, it's called the Olivet Discourse uh, because it's on top of the t Mount of Olives. Olivet Discourse. They continue on to Bethany. Now, um, Holy Wednesday, there, Jesus is in Bethany, uh, presumably, all day Wednesday until they're back into Jerusalem on Monday, Thursday. Now, uh, we don't know any events on the Holy Wednesday except perhaps one. It, it's probably on this day that Judas goes to Jerusalem uh, in, in order to contract for the betrayal of Jesus. Now, we're really into it. Thursday, they're into Jerusalem, and this is when Jesus washes his disciples' feet. This is when Jesus institutes the Lord's Supper uh, in the upper room, and um, and presumably that the upper room is somewhere in this region of Jerusalem. They travel uh, after the Lord's Supper. They sing a hymn, and they travel out uh, to the Garden of Gethsemane, which is here on the side of the Mount of Olives. That's where Jesus is arrested. He's taken back into Jerusalem, and there's five trials of Jesus that extend from through the night, Friday, into early morning on, on Friday uh, in the morning. And those five trials are, the first, we have the Jewish uh, trial before the father-in-law, the high priest. The second is the, so we'll just say high priest. The second trial is before the Sanhedrin, uh, the 70 ruling elders. The third, and these are Ju Jesus' Jewish trial. The third is his first Roman trial before Pilate. Then he sent to Herod, who had a, a palace there and was there for the Passover. And then fifth, Jesus is back before the trial before Pilate. And these are all the events of the Passion. Now, this all takes place uh, uh, all through the night, the Jewish trials, and then first thing in the morning, these things, so that uh, b b Jesus is whipped and handed over to the soldiers, so that by 9 a.m. on Friday morning, Jesus is taken outside of the city, uh, probably over here somewhere in this region, and he is crucified. Now, this crucifixion lasts from 9 until 3 p.m., and there's seven words that Jesus speaks from the cross. Uh, it's right uh, three at the beginning. Behold your mother, Jesus gives Mary uh, to, uh, to John. Father, forgive them. They don't know what they're doing. Um, and then Jesus says to the thief, today you'll be with me in paradise. Those are the, that's kind of the first set, the first three words. And then at the end, I thirst, it's finished. Into thy hands I commend my spirit. But it's right in the middle, and this is during the three hours of darkness, from noon until three, that Jesus cries out, My God, my God, why have you forsaken me? And this is the cry of dereliction. And this is the three hours 
where Jesus is suffering the wrath of God to atone for our sins. Jesus, at the end of the three hours, the, uh, he gives up his spirit. The temple, he, Jesus is over here somewhere. The curtain in the temple here is turned and torn in two. There's a great earthquake. The graves of some of the people around Jerusalem are opened up, and all of this wild, wild things happen. Uh, the soldiers come to uh, break the knees of the men being crucified because they want to take them down before sunset here on Saturday, and they find that Jesus is already dead. So he's taken Joseph of Arimathea and Nicodemus arranged for him to be taken to the tomb, and so Jesus is laid in the tomb. Those are the events of, of Holy Week. Now, uh, Jesus stays in the tomb all that day Saturday, and then sometime early on Sunday, before the sun is even up, Jesus is raised from the dead to our great joy and our great comfort. So this is the sketch of the events and the week uh, of, of Holy Week. Uh, we call it the Passion of Jesus um, because passion means suffering. It means really being passive, letting things happen to you. And Jesus is suffering here. He's suffering the pain of the cross. He's suffering the rebuke of the world. But most especially, Jesus is suffering the wrath of God. He is stricken by God and smitten. And he is doing this for you. Jesus takes your place on the cross. Uh, he takes the suffering that you deserve so that we might stand with him and be with him forever. So a blessed Holy Week to you guys. Uh, check out in the links and print this thing off. You can see all of the events of Holy Week and the scripture references that go to them uh, on the chart there. And uh, you can use this for your devotions this week and for the rest of your life. God's peace be with you. Worldview Everlasting is solid, Christian, and free because it is viewer supported. Your monthly gift of five, 10, or $25 is the reason that we can continue to improve and expand these tools for online Christian outreach and discipleship. To make a one-time donation, sign up for the Lutheran Ninja Clan regular giving, or to find information about how to put Worldview Everlasting in your congregation's budget, click Donate Now. Jesus.